Next tonight, and lifeboat crews in our region carried out a record number of rescues this summer. That's according to some new figures just released today. Between June and August, the RNLI launched 385 times. That's nearly 40% more than last year. In Southend, rescues more than doubled, and stations in Harwich, Clacton and Galston were also busier than ever. The hot weather and more what they call staycations seem to have fueled their seasonal workload, as Laura Burns has been to find out. It's been the warmest, driest and sunniest summer in our region for three years. So for thousands, it was a chance to head out into the sunshine and take a well-deserved breather. But there's been no chance of that for East Anglia's lifeboat crews. They've been dealing with a record number of call-outs leading to nearly 400 launches in the space of just three months. There are 16 lifeboat stations in East Anglia, including here at Galston in Norfolk. This summer's been the busiest ever, with some crews launching two or three times in just one day. According to figures released today by the RNLI, the busiest station was South End on Sea. It had 84 launches, more than double the figure last summer. Next was Harwich, with 52 launches, up from 30 in 2008. Clacton-on-Sea had 37 launches, compared to 33 the year before. And in Gorston, crews launched 35 times, up from 27 the previous summer. With the good weather we've been having and all the uh, locals and holiday makers visiting Gorston, uh, we have been extremely busy. When the pages go, we get a call and we go. We don't even think about what's causing the problem, as uh, we have beach lifeguards as well there on scene. Just human error and a, and a uh, complete mass of volume of people on the beaches at this time of the year. In fact, as we were filming, a crew arrived back from a launch. They'd gone to investigate reports of four people on a dinghy a long way from shore. It turns out they were perfectly safe, but often people aren't. At the start of August, a 25-year-old man went missing off the Yarmouth coast. His body has never been found. And less than two weeks later, 10-year-old Stella Acambi from Milton Keynes died after getting into difficulties in the sea at Clacton. As the holiday season draws to a close, rescue teams are expecting their call-outs to dwindle. But they're hoping people will take their safety advice on board to ensure next summer will be a quieter one. Laura Burns, Anglia News, Galston in Norfolk. Busy summer there for the RNLI. Now the winners of the Royal Horticultural Society's Britain in Bloom competition will be announced tonight. And among those hoping to pick up an award are five finalists from our region. Well, Wisbeach in Cambridgeshire is the finalist in the big town category, when, as well as Wisbeach. Other finalists include Bedford, the Oxmoor Estate in Huntington, and Philby and Hunstanton in Norfolk. The hotly fought contest has been going since about 1963, to be precise. And the winners will be announced this evening and of course we will have those on tomorrow night's program Absolutely. as well now a mother from Essex has become the first woman in 157 years to give birth at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital in London Nicola Taylor who's from Canvey Island was staying there with her six-year-old daughter Kelly who's actually recovering tr receiving treatment sorry for cancer when she then went into labor and as ITV's Liz Wickham reports the arrival of baby Zach has given his big sister and mum a real boost all home safe and sound on Canvey Island. Big sister Chloe takes charge of Zach now, but it was Kelly who got first cuddles with him when he was born in her hospital room at Great Ormond Street. In June, Kelly was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a cancerous tumour in the neck, and she's been suffering the horrors of chemotherapy since then. I put a pin in both of my hands. Oh, wow. was that horrible? And I couldn't move my hands anywhere. I couldn't eat. So Mummy needed to feed me. I had me. to feed you, didn't I? Really? Kelly had just one more treatment to go when her mum, Nicola, was visiting, heavily anticipating the birth of Zach in about five days' time. But suddenly something stirred. The doctor came in to see Kelly, see how she was and everything, and I followed him out and I was like... This is about 11 o'clock now, and I said, um, I think it's about time we get the maternity number because we were due to go to uh, Universal College Hospital. Mm -hmm. And they were like, how far are your contractions apart? And I was like, 30 to 40 minutes. Everyone at Great Ormond Street was very relaxed about the situation until Zach decided to speed things up. 
It was exciting in that we were like, oh no, this is going to happen on the ward, um, and we don't, we, well, we're not a maternity unit, so clearly we didn't want it to happen on the ward, but we realised that we just didn't have time to um, move Nicola. Um, so it probably was um, exciting at the time, um, but we, everybody was allocated a job, everybody knew what they were doing, and Nicola had total faith in us, um, which was really, really nice. In some ways you could say that Zach's timing is perfect. After all, he was born into very safe hands and provided the best possible present for his little sister. Great Ormond Street has never had a maternity department and Zach is the only baby to be born here in 157 years. But Mum and Dad, Dave, were perfectly happy with the cobbled together treatment. I can't thank Great Ormond Street enough for what they've done for her and helping him come into the world. Liz Wickham, Anglia News, Canvey Island. Lovely to see Zach there. And also, just a quick update on Kelly, who we saw actually having the cancer treatment there. The good news is that she's making good progress after her treatment, which is terrific stuff. Fantastic news for the whole family. Now let's have a look at what's coming up on the national news in a couple of minutes' time. Driven by pain and despair to end your own life, an awful prospect. And until today, for people like Debbie Purdy, there was the additional agony of knowing your loved ones, if they help you, could face prosecution. But that's all different now. We'll explain why compassion and selflessness will be accepted as a defence. Also, why does Gordon Brown believe the time is right to lower our nuclear defences? To make the world a safer place or to save cash? And the McCanns are back in Portugal tonight. Is there progress? Or is